Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I wanted to show you one of the most common lighting techniques that you can use in real estate photography. Now this is something I talk about in my interiors book and it's something that I want to elaborate on a little bit more here so you can see why you'd compose a certain way and also a simple way to light it. It's what I call the distant window and the distant diamond technique. It's very simple and it actually will get you some of the better results. There's another type of composition where we'll be shooting away from the distant window, distant diamond, and I'll show you what we could be up against a little bit in this uh, tutorial and then more so in a future tutorial. But this is the most common, so I wanted to show you these two principles and then show you some examples and how it's really used in the real world. So the first thing about the distant window is that the idea here is that the window is in the distance. So our camera, as shown in this diagram, is usually shooting at an angle into a room, unless we're doing a single point perspective, like I talk about uh, in my interiors book. So the idea here is that if you let the window use just ambient light, and that's all that was coming into the room, then we have a bit of a gradient. We've got a lot of light that's at the window, and then we've got less light that hits the camera, so that doesn't fill the room. We can use that to our advantage, though, by then placing a light in what I call the distant diamond. So the idea of the distant diamond is that you've got some flashed light. In this case, I'm showing that I'd have my flash to a uh, camera left. And I'd be able to then fill in that area that would be dark with flashed light. And then of course, I've got that ambient. And this all starts forming a diamond. Now the idea here though, and why it's called distant diamond, is that that flash is in the distant part of the diamond compared to an incorrect placement which would have it too close. So this would be closer to the window. It would be also closer to these, to that uh, far wall where the window is. So there would be a lot of light that would be shed toward that window. And we want as much diffused light as possible when we're trying to overcome ambient especially. So we want to have it in the correct position, which means that it's farthest away from the window, it's farthest away from the walls, and therefore it's in the farthest, most distant diamond. So that's how the distant diamond plays out, the distant window. It's a pretty simple theory, actually. It just means put your window in the distance. If you shoot toward the window and you're going to be using some flashlight, then you can even the two out. Now you'd think, it's like, okay, I could go ahead and have the, uh, the ambient light come in, and I could equalize it and having then just enough flash power at the right f-stop, right aperture, and then I could get the combination of both for an equal light. Problem is though is that that ambient light coming in is going to have a strange color temperature compared to possibly the flash, some other casts that could be coming in, for instance light that's reflecting off of a yard showing some green on the walls, you don't want that. And also you might have some incandescent lights or fluorescent lights or something else in the room. So one of the things, once again I point out in the interiors book, is to overcome those ambient artifacts. So we want a lot of flash light not just to overcome that, but when we have an ambient layer that we can use in a luminosity mode. And then we've got this flash layer that we've got that overcame the ambient artifacts and also then filled in the portion that the ambient didn't. We can get the best of both worlds using the flash ambient technique and the distant diamond. So next I want to show you just real quick a refresher on the flash ambient technique and how this distant diamond plays into it. You ready? Let's take a look. So this is an ideal circumstance where we're shooting that uh, angled room. So we've got the distant diamond that would come into play very nicely on this. Now this is just an ambient shot and it looks very ambient. Um, the colors are way off. It's a very such a slow exposure that you've got a lot of these ambient artifacts uh, coming in. And of course, and all kinds of color casts are coming in because the sun, like the sun's corona is coming in, bouncing off of all kinds of stuff. So we want to clean that up. So we take a flash shot. And this is done with an Explore 600, and obviously it cleaned up those ambient artifacts. So I overpowered the ambient light where I'm not getting the strange color temperature stuff coming off the lights. I don't have the color casts on the ceiling. And of course we could still get color casts and there's things we can do uh, to fix that. And I show some of that in my uh, advanced editing book and there's other tutorials online here as well. And I can do more of those too if I uh, get requests so you want to see more about removing color casts, I'll do another tutorial as well. But anyways, the idea here is that I'm holding an Explore 600 in the distant diamond. It's off here to camera left, not camera right. If I was at camera right, I'd be flooding out this wall, this uh, beige brownish wall. So having it in the distant diamond, I'm still a far distance from this purple wall, 
but I'm uh, at enough of a distance where I'm still lighting the room. Now I'm going to show another example in just a little bit of why we want to get enough light to go across there. We can't compensate it all just with ambient. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and take these into um, Photoshop like I usually do. And if you may recall, this is just the... Um, We'll just open these as layers in Photoshop. This is just the common flash ambient technique. You've uh, probably read about this in my interiors book and seen it on tutorials that I use here online. So I'm not going to belabor the point too much, but to show you the effect of how Distant Diamond then works by using enough flash ambient. So with flash ambient, that ambient layer on top would be turned to luminosity mode, and you can already see we've got some evening of the light, but we don't want all of it. So we hide the layer mask and then use a low flow brush. I'm going to use about 10% flow. And when I start painting on, for instance, like the ceiling, you can see I can add just enough ambient into the distance. So I'm going to add that also into the distance where my light wouldn't reach on the far wall so I make the bed look natural. Now I had too much light that was in the foreground because of the explorer. So to even out some of that and take it away, I just go across the bottom with my ambient and now I'm starting to get a more realistic looking uh, picture by evening out light. Once again, having that light in the distant diamond allowed me to shed enough light into the room to get the color I want light the foreground, but not really get the, the, uh, the distance. So that's where the ambient comes in. If I were to go all ambient, that's what I'd have. So, and if I were to go just all flash, that's what I'd have. But by mixing the two together, I'm able to get somewhat of a balance. Now I can control how much I want and how much uh, I want that to look. So that's not looking too bad. Okay. Now, all that I do at the end here, just as a refresher once again, is I just go, uh, I just flatten all those layers. I'd save it. That takes us back into Lightroom, where then I can apply some type of a bump. And I'd probably just go ahead and apply this bump here. That's not looking too bad. Maybe a couple small adjustments to really uh, bring that up. So that's more of a, a nice, bright looking picture. And once again, before though, what we had is we had an ambient. And then I shot using the distant diamond this shot, and when I was able to blend them together using the ambient and luminosity mode, then I got this type of result. So that looks good. I got even lighting across there, and obviously with the flashlight, I was able to get then enough of the outside exposure also, which with the ambient, you'd never be able to get. But let's take a look at another example here. So this is a kitchen, obviously, um, and that's an ambient shot, and this is a flashed shot. This flash shot is not powerful enough. Watch what happens. If I open these up in uh, Photoshop as layers, we're going to see a problem because it's a little bit too dark. Remember, we're working in a luminosity mode when it comes to the ambient, which means it's going to try to pull out the colors from whatever the flashed shot had. If I don't have enough flash power to get enough color across to that far wall, I'm going to have a problem. So if I were to have this as an ambient, this is luminosity mode now, Look what happens to the color. It got too bright up here. So if I were to have that ambient over top of this layer, I know the red is not that light. It's way too light. So I need to get a little bit more light in there, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and close the sky out. I'm going to show you the alternative to doing that. It's a little bit more work on site. What you would do is you would take and composite. So here I'm standing over here with a speed light. I've got my Explorer near the camera in the distant diamond, but then I go ahead and I give a couple pops here that I can blend together and that way I've got a little bit more light in the far room. So now when I open up that and I make a composite and add the ambient, then it's going beyond just the distant diamond, but it's still the same principle in that what I've got is I'm going to utilize the ambient layer to my advantage to be able to fill in the light in the far diamond away from me. So once that comes up, I'm going to go ahead and just turn this guy into luminosity mode. And once again, if this is going a little too fast for you, all these steps are in my interiors book and also somewhat in the advanced editing book. So turn that into luminosity mode and just go ahead and hide that layer. And then I'm going to take this guy and just a layer mask hide. And I'm going to take a brush at 100% opacity and then just paint in to cover myself up so I can hide myself. And then just blend that in nicely so we've got more of an even type of composite shot. So that's not looking too bad. Now I've got somewhat of an even composite. It's better lit in the distance over here than what it was um, when I was dealing with just that one flash shot. Now that in itself doesn't look too bad as a composite, but I can get it better by adding in some luminosity. 
If I turn off the mask, we can see now the results. It's a little deeper red the way that it should be, and now I can paint in the luminosity a little less. I don't need as much of it either. So I go to a lower flow brush, about 10%, and I start painting in that luminosity. So there we go, just paint in that. Now I can get those cabinets to really pop, and especially underneath that counter. I'm gonna move that flow up to 20% just to do this faster on that brush. Look at that starting to come in. See, now we're starting to have a more natural looking, and I'm getting the reason why it's natural is I'm eliminating some of the flashlight in the foreground. I'm adding some of the natural light from the distant window than for the uh, far distant wall that I'm working with. I'm not going to add a window pull to this. That's probably good enough for what we need. And so that's not looking too bad. So if it were to be all ambient, it would look like this. If we were to have no ambient, it would look like this. But the combination then of flash ambient allows us to have this. And here's a little quick trick for you too. I'll just go ahead and throw in here. We've got some red casting on the ceiling. Some of that's also from my flash. I'm gonna just go ahead and draw a polygon. I'm gonna feather that. So I'm gonna go select. I'm gonna go ahead and modify and I'm gonna feather that by just five points. You might've seen me do this in another tutorial. It's just a little extra here, but it just really annoys me. Anyways, then I'm gonna go ahead and add a new hue adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll go with a hue saturation layer. And that then makes a hue saturation layer with that selection. And I'm just gonna desaturate that layer. Now I've got a nice white ceiling. Anyways, that was just a bonus. The fact is, the, uh, the moral of the story is that having the right balance of ambient against my flash, using it in the distant diamond, we're good to go. So I'm flatten that out, save it, get back here to Lightroom, apply one of my bumps to it, and now we're looking pretty good with a final product. So that's the idea behind distant window and distant diamond. One of the more popular things to do is shoot towards that window. Now, if you're not using flash, you're gonna get completely blown out windows or you're gonna get a completely dark room. But we have light coming in that uses a couple things to our advantage. One, it helps us fill in using luminosity mode, not its ambient color. But using that, we can then fill in where our flash won't. And we can also then use that to overcome some of the over flashiness that we have that's in the foreground. So so we've got a lot of stuff going on that can help us with just shooting toward the window and using enough flash power. But once again, you don't want to have an, a complete equalization of a flash shot that has 50% ambient, 50% flash, because otherwise you're going to get all those ambient artifacts. And that's why you want to be able to knock those out. You'll get a truer color, and then you can just use ambient and luminosity mode to then fill in where you need. And this also is covered, by the way, in the interiors book. I'll have more tutorials on this if there's interest and you want to see more examples of that. And also that color cast issue that I also showed here on the uh, when I was fixing that ceiling with all that red on it. That's in the uh, advanced book. But there's also a tutorial on my YouTube channel as well for fixing those color cast issues. Anyways, I hope this was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.